Thank you for joining us on this Friday, February 15th, live from the Beasley Media Complex in Boone. This is the Appalachian Weekly News. I'm Faith Hatton. And I'm Callie Walton. App State Professor Stella Anderson and the Board of Elections will hold a hearing to discuss charges of voter fraud in the 2018 midterm elections. Individuals in the 9th Congressional District have been accused of withholding absentee ballots. The state's year-long investigation will present its findings to the board during the hearing. Republican Mark Harris won the election not by 905 votes over his opponent, Democrat Dan McCready. Anderson says the board will decide either to confirm the results or call a special election or send a case to the House State of Representatives. The hearing takes place February 18th. The board also wants new voter ID laws and new voting machines across the state. I, along with a set of other students and a couple of other folks active locally, you know, have to sue the state board over mm -hmm. um, the consideration of um, the early voting plan at that time. Um, Some App State faculty are considering part-time retail jobs because they can no longer afford the cost of living in Boone. According to a budget committee report, the cost of living in Boone has increased 48.3 percent more than App State faculty salaries. Faculty salaries amount to $6,000 below a university goal that was set back in 2009. Michael Barrent is the vice president of the North Carolina chapter of the American Association of University Professors. He says pay issues affect faculty across the UNC school system. I have heard on a number of occasions, including on this campus, that um, they come to campus, people are even particular, perhaps interested in working here or in another UNC system uh, sc <coughs> school. <coughs> excuse me, and and. Uh, they decline to take the position because uh, because they are actually offering being offered. Um, they already have other offers from institutions where, where they're paid better or the benefits are better, mm -hmm. and and so they simply don't take the job because we're not we don't have competitive salaries. Mm -hmm. uh, so that is so so that is an issue. Provost and App State Vice Chancellor Daryl Kruger wrote in an email to our correspondent Anna Muckenfuss that Chancellor Sherry Everts has fought for an increase in compensation. Kruger wrote that Everts has allocated more than $10 million in salary increases and incremental benefits for faculty. The Faculty Senate will meet on February 25th at 4 in the afternoon in Parkway Ballroom to discuss faculty salaries. This meeting is open to the public. Students with stadium lot passes will now have to scrounge for a parking spot, at least for a while. Duck Pond Field and the stadium parking lot are now officially under construction. 280 parking spaces were coned off Thursday morning to make way for a new parking deck and two new buildings. The parking and transportation team has cut back on the number of stadium lot parking passes. Overflow parking options include the Greenwood lot and the Smith Baseball Stadium lots, all of which are at least 100 or 1.2 miles and three stoplights away. Stadium lot permit holders should allow themselves more time to get to the overflow lots. If you have any questions, you can contact the Parking and Transportation Office at 828-262-2878. Prime real estate abounds in Boone, but one piece of land has been on the market for five years. It's Mount Lawn Cemetery. Our correspondent, Clay Councilman, has all the details. Mount Lawn Memorial Park and Gardens is a privately owned cemetery that has been in operation for nearly 70 years. The property has seen better days as financial troubles have led to issues like the uneven driveways seeing no repairs. Owner Clee Lyles is ready to get out of the cemetery business and leave the property to someone who can give it the attention it deserves. I'm financially unavailable, uh, not able to make significant improvements on the driveways. Um, I've had the, the property on the market for five years. I've had a few people who've shown a little bit of interest, um, but nobody has really made me any credible offers. I, I thought this might be a five-year project uh, that's turned into a lot longer adventure for me. At this point, Lyles has offered the town of Boone the property as a gift, but the town is hesitant to take over the property due to a variety of issues, including the fact that Lyles does not own the part of the property that the cemetery's office building sits on. We'd have to make significant upgrades to the roadway and the buildings on the site we would have to make significant investment in legal matters in order to determine who actually owns the um, parcel that he's utilizing as an office. There would be the need for additional staffing because we currently don't have a uh, staff allocated for cemetery uh, maintenance, repair, and or operation. I think the misconception is the town could just absorb doing all that 
when we're already um, at uh, insufficient staffing levels for what we're already taking care of. So I think the most ideal situation for the town, the county, those who have loved ones there would be for it to continue to stay as a uh, private cemetery that's funded through private funds. It is possible for the North Carolina Cemetery Commission to take control of the property, but they would have to appeal to a judge for a permanent injunction. If it's a permanent injunction, the cemetery is taken away from the owner permanently, and the receiver and the cemetery commission work to find a new owner. Mount Lawn has no plans to cease operations and will continue to serve the community. Blouse has stated that if you've already purchased a burial plot at the cemetery, your spot will remain safe even if the operation changes hands. The property will remain on the market for about another year, and then he will begin to explore his other options. Reporting for Appalachian Weekly News, I'm Clay Council. Thank you, Clay. The annual Fiddler's Convention took place at the Plymouth Student Union last week. Laird Davis has the story. The 11th annual Old Time Fiddler's Convention is a celebration of the musical genre that is the progenitor for genres such as bluegrass and country music, but is also a celebration of all things Appalachian. Organized by apps, this convention features musicians from all over competing with one another in fiddling competitions, banjo competitions, as well as simply just busking or sharing their musical talents. In addition, you have a variety of vendors sharing local Appalachia crafts and even a cafeteria featuring some of the traditional food of the high country. Organized by apps, the people involved say that this event is very important for preserving Appalachia tradition. In addition to a number of competitions, you'll also find vendors selling traditional Appalachian crafts, a room full of ludiers who create and sell fiddles, guitars, and other instruments, as well as a room where you can try out the traditional foods of the high country. For two days each year, the student union echoes with the whine of bowstrings and the thrum of guitar chords. The Old Time Fielders Convention is just one more way that Appalachian State helps to preserve the traditions of this region that we call home. For the Appalachian Weekly News, I'm Leard Davis. Thank you, Laird. An upcoming theater production on campus gives audience a closer look at life and rules of the underworld. The Department of Theater and Dance is taking on an old tale in the upcoming production, Eurydice. The play, written by Sarah Rule, was inspired by the Greek myth of Orpheus and Eurydice. In the myth, the musician Orpheus travels to the underworld to free the soul of his departed wife and return with her to the mortal world. The story is told from Eurydice's perspective as she suffers from amnesia and must endure the torments of the underworld. The show will begin February 20th at the Valborg Theater. To purchase tickets, visit the Schaefer Center box office or go online to theaterandance.appstate.edu for more information. A dance group on campus hopes to change how the Appalachian region views music culture. Entropy Dance Crew was created in 2010 to change the culture around dance at App State and to focus on urban and hip hop dance. Entropy welcomes any forms of dance and encourages a variety of, a, sorry, a variety within its choreography. Rachel Bohannon is secretary of the dance group. She says that Entropy is different from other dance crews because it focuses on foundations and freestyling. Entropy performs at school-related events and participates in service projects throughout the semester. They meet three days a week for two hours and travel at least once each semester to participate in dance conventions with other UNC system dance crews. The Horton Hotel on King Street is officially opened. Our correspondent Anna Muckenfuss has the details. I'm here at King Street's newest addition, the 15-room boutique hotel, the Horton Hotel. Let's go see what it's like. The Horton Hotel is the only hotel located on King Street. It is also the only building with a rooftop lounge in downtown Boone. The Horton Hotel offers pet-friendly suites and several other amenities, including comfortable robes and locally made soaps and lotions. The Horton Hotel currently has two student interns on staff. Adams says her work with the hotel has offered her a chance to get real world experience. So I do a lot of PR and I help with social media. I'm also building a family tree. So that's been big of just infusing the history of um, Walter Horton within the space since this is um, a building that he had owned. Denise Levin, owner of the Horton Hotel, says that the Horton will be a place for all to gather and enjoy a space with a touch of sophistication. The mission of the hotel is really to exceed the guest expectations and everyone that walks through the door. Um, it's also a big deal to be neighborly and invite everyone in our space and to build long-lasting relationships. The Horton Hotel opened to guests on February 13th 
and anyone who is interested in making a reservation can call or go online to the Horton Hotel website. I'm Anna Muckenfuss for the Appalachian Weekly News. Back to you in the studio. Thank you, Anna. All right, now it's time to check in on sports with Hannah Mosley. Hannah, how are the teams doing this week? Well, Kylie, a team is nothing without its coaches, and the App State volleyball team has welcomed new assistant coach Colby Arrington. Arrington comes from William & Mary, where he coached last year. He spent most of his career coaching at James Madison University, where he graduated in 2017 and helped lead the team to its second CAA championship. He coached the Dukes for three seasons. Arrington also served as president of JMU's nationally ranked men's volleyball program for two years. He was part of the 18 teams coaching staff for the Next Revolution Volleyball Club out of Roanoke, Virginia. Welcome to App State Volleyball, Colby. After a three-day opening tournament at Elon University, the App State softball team has a 1-3 overall record. Non-conference play began as the team was successful over Longwood University 6-3. Carrie White and Sydney Russell had two hits apiece, and Kinsey Longenecker struck out batters left and right for a combined total of seven strikeouts. The following two games did not go as well. The team fell to Elon and Eastern Kentucky University. The team is setting its sights on North Carolina A&T as the team's home opening doubleheader is February 15th, with first pitches scheduled at 2 and 4.30. The App State wrestling team crushed Davidson 43-0 on Tuesday night. In individual matches, Carrie Miller, Alan Clothier, and Randall Diabe all had takedowns in less than one minute. There were two pins in the duel by seniors Irvin Enriquez and Michael Elliott, who ended the duel with his pin at 3 minutes 50 seconds. Aiming for the team's fourth straight conference title, the last conference meet is against the Citadel at home on Sunday, and that brings them one step closer to the SOCON championship that is set for March 10th. Okay, Faith and Kylie, we've got a lot of new coaching changes happening right now. We have the hiring of the new football coach, Elijah Drinkwitz, the new men's tennis coach, Craig Schwartz, and now a new assistant volleyball coach, Colby Arrington. Seems like they're really trying to establish some new leadership in hope to revamp the team's success for the future. All right, well, thank you, Hannah. We'll have to see how that leadership pans out for the upcoming seasons. But for right now, it's time for your High Country High Note. Great Barbecue is headed to Boone. Howard Station Bar and Barbecue plans to open for business in April. App State alumni Cody Estes, Chelsea Jackson, and Andy Phillips co-own the restaurant and bar on Howard Street. Jackson and Estes purchased the property in October 2018 and immediately began renovation. The couple plans to decorate the restaurant and bar in honor of the 1919 Howard Station Railroad. Andy Phillips, the restaurant's cook, wants to cater to all the residents of Boone. Phillips says he wants to incorporate traditional smokehouse dishes and meals that are more outside the box, like barbecue waffles. The Howard Station Bar and Barbecue will also offer college students a late night menu from 10 at night till 2 in the morning. Wow, Faith, that sounds great. I am super excited about their opening in April, and I can't wait to try their barbecue. For sure. <laughs> well, that's our report this week. I'm Callie Walton. And I'm Faith Hatton. For all of us at the Appalachian Weekly News, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.